In today's DIY, I'm going to be showing you how to install the VR Speed Factory downpipe fix. This module is used for uh, testing purposes only, of course. You'd never want to use this on any emission-controlled vehicle in the United States. What this unit does is it tells the DME that there's uh, basically cats when you don't have cats in your uh, downpipes. Well, not exactly that way, but it takes away that pesky check engine light you'll get if you don't have uh, MHD flashed. All you're going to need for this job is a 13 millimeter socket, your VRSF downpipe, a 5 millimeter Allen wrench or Allen key or T30 Torx, however I recommend you use um, uh, the proper 5 millimeter there, and some electrical tape. You also need a 10 millimeter socket when you go to disconnect the battery. First thing you're going to need to do is pop the hood and remove this whole cowl there. Instructions on how to remove the cowl can be found in this video here. Now the cowl's removed, you have access to the DME box. Before you go any further, disconnect the battery. Once the battery's been disconnected, you're going to need to slide this guy over to unlocked. Then you're going to want to remove the five five millimeter Allen bolts. Now that you've removed the cover and disconnected the battery, we need to locate the DME, which is right here. And on this side here, it's kind of hard to tell with uh, this wiring mess, there is a little, not really clip, but kind of like handle almost, in which you pull like that, all the way back to release this cable from the DMA. Once you've done that, you can lift this cable out and out comes the harness as well. Now you can see that clip a little bit better. From here we're going to be sliding out this so we can get better access to the wires in here. Now that you've got your DME uh, wiring harness here disconnected, you're going to need to remove the slider. The way you do that is there's a hole here, the lighting is not that great. There's a hole right there and one right on the opposite side, right, right below there. You can stick a little pick tool in there or a small screwdriver if you have one small enough and that's not going to focus there. Okay, that's the best that's going to want to focus for right now. And you just push that back there and do the same there. And you'll be able to release this slider and it'll come right out, kind of. And it might be easier to do this with two hands instead of filming with one. All right, that's out. Set that somewhere where you won't lose it. You know, yeah, yeah, I'll do it there because. <laughs> All right, next, you're going to want to remove that, the top wiring harness there. To do that, same thing, put a little screwdriver or pick tool in this empty spot, sometime if you want to focus in there, and there's a little tab up there, if that'll ever focus, and once once you've got that, that tab um, pushed open, yeah, once you've got that tab pushed open, you can then use this uh, pick tool or screwdriver, whatever you're using, to slide this whole assembly out. Once you've slid that dirty dog out, that's what you're going to have. This connector has two sides. One's labeled 1 to 13, the other side is 14 to 26. We're going to be working on the 20, uh, 14 to 26 side. This is what the 14 to 26 side looks like with this uh, green striped, this yellow with green striped wire all the way on the right side. Now we're going to have to count to pin 19, 20, and 23 those ones that we're gonna have to remove. These are what the wires look like removed. I put some tape on 20 because 19 and 20 are both yellow wires and I don't wanna get them mixed up. It's hard, a little bit hard to focus here. Um, this is 23, it's a black and red wire. To remove these things, I'm gonna try to explain it best while it remains as unfocused as possible. You can depress these pins in here. I use a small pick tool, you can use a small uh, screwdriver and then you gently pull the wire as those pins in there are depressed. It's time now to grab the DP fix. You're gonna take the two black female wires and insert them to 19 and 20. They're interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which one goes where. You should hear an audible click once those wires go in. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that they go in the same way the other ones came out. Next, take the red female wire and plug it into pos position 23 where you got that black and red wire from. Now you're gonna to wanna to take the red male wire and plug it into the black and red striped uh, wire you took out of position 23. After that, you take the male black wire and plug it into either position 19 or uh, 19 or 20s wires that you took out. Not into the position on the connector, but either one of these. You're going to want to make a note of which wire is which. 
I've decided to tape off position 20 so I know 19 with the rubber stamping in the back here goes back into 19 because when you're done and you want to return this to stock you absolutely have to make sure that these two wires go back together in the same spot they came out from. Now this is what the final result should look like and you're going to want to make sure you tape up this connection, that connection and this wire that's left free because you absolutely don't want that to short. I'm going to see if it's going to try to focus, there we go. That's what those uh, wires going into this harness should look like. And then we'll get to adjusting the downpipe fix itself next. Now that those wires are all taped up and secure, we're going to slide it back into the harness and put the slide back on. Now that that harness is back in, make sure to secure it to the DME. Give it a little tug to make sure that it's uh, nice and tight there. And now it's time to adjust this to your potentiometer. With the DP fix facing this way, you're going to want to take a small Phillips head screwdriver you see that little arrow in the top right there, that yellow? You're going to want to move that to about the 5 o'clock position. Let's give it a little turn like that. From here you can put your battery back together and then start up your car to see if there's still a check engine light. That's if you don't have MHD or something flashed. If everything's installed correctly, you should not get a check engine light. Uh, the reason I've got that is because every time I disconnect the battery and I've got um, XHP Stage 3 flashed on here, it does this until I drive about 10 feet. So if you have the same, don't worry if that comes up for you. Because I forgot to mention, you're going to want to make sure you route these wires in a way that doesn't really interfere with anything and you can properly install that lid back on without any room for water or dust or uh, termites to get in there. Now if you don't have MHD flashed, or um, I'm sorry, if you do have MHD flashed, you probably shouldn't be getting code in the first place or any type of check engine light related to the O2 sensors if you've got catless downpipes, especially if you're on a map that supports it. If you're not, then you should be getting a check engine light uh, unless you've got some kind of special ECU or if you got JB4. I'm not sure if JB4 actually suppresses that check engine light anymore or if they do or never did. I'm not exactly sure because I don't have a JB4, never had one installed. Uh, one way you can test to those values if you do have MHD flashed and for some reason you don't want MHD flashed but you want that uh, downpipe fix thing on there is uh, you can flash back to stock and then play with that potentiometer to see once that uh, check engine light clears and then you should be good to go. And after this stage just button everything back up in the same order that you, well I guess reverse order, that would make more sense, in the reverse order that you did everything for and if you found this DIY helpful Make sure to give this a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel because I'll have more DIYs coming up for all sorts of different things, and uh, thanks for watching. Make sure to keep it foul.